All right, good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I didn't get any response. Evening. Okay, all right, so we continue our discussion on discourse analysis. Um, and as I said before, the mid semester is based on discourse analysis. Um, can anybody remind me some of the concepts or the terminologies that we were introduced to under discourse analysis? It's not a rhetorical question, people. Can you respond? All right, so whenever you feel like answering, I'll continue, okay? So we were introduced to different language strategies. All right, so we were introduced to different language strategies. Can you remind us about some of those language strategies? Cause and effect, um, use of definition. Yes. Mm -hmm. Give us some more. Contrast. Contrast, yes. Use of examples. Use of examples, yes. Anything else? Sorry, expert opinions. Expert opinions, yes. All right, so some of those are the um, general ones that were mentioned. Let's just quickly do a recap and then we proceed. Um, so we did say that we are critically analyzing texts or discourse. Um, and we spoke about the fact that there are different types of readings um, or different purposes for reading and that in our bid to analyze a piece of discourse, we're doing different, we're participating in the reading process or the reading processes. So skimming in the sense of skimming, you're just looking for specific information and scanning, no, skimming, sorry. No, sorry, sorry, let me rephrase. So scanning is when you're looking for specific pieces of information and skimming, no, is when you just really just glancing over just to get the gist of everything. Then you have close slash intensive reading is where you want to extract specific, specific information and you understand certain pieces of information in the text. Critical reading now is partly what you're participating in, in terms of identifying writer's purpose, writer's main idea and rhetorical strategies. We went ahead and looked at, you know, I don't want to get into all the benefits of reading, but we looked at it in the context of um, understanding organizational strategies and that what you're expected to do is to analyze or critically read text or discourse. And it means that you're breaking down the whole text into various parts, explaining how each strategy, for example, helps the writer um, to achieve his or her purpose. And we made a distinction between analysis and critical analysis in terms of, and that is what you are doing. You're doing critical analysis and that it is important in the context of consulting sources and using them within the body of your paper. We spoke about the rhetorical situation and we looked at um, subject, author, purpose, context, audience, and we also mentioned the organizing, organizing um, principles, types of evidence, and we spoke about style. We mentioned that the subject or you can say the subject is the main idea. And I did mention that the main idea, it is who or what the discourse is about. So when they say, what is the writer's main idea? The writer's main idea is that, and I did mention that you begin that with the, that clause, or you say the main writer's main point is that. We mentioned too that you need to understand the perspective in terms of the author, not the author, um, specific person, but from a, from, a, from a kind of perspective. Then we mentioned about audience, the different types of audience, um, audiences that exist, that you have primary versus secondary, specialist versus general. We mentioned too the whole notion of purpose and that these are some of the terms that are used to 
um, speak to, to purpose, inform, instruct, clarify, argue, assert claims, um, and that it is reflected in the dominant mode of discourse. So the writer's overall um, purpose determines the type of discourse mode. So if, it is, if the writer's purpose generally is to inform, then the discourse mode is expository. If the writer's general purpose is to persuade, then of course the writer's purpose is um, the general the discourse mode could be argumentation slash persuasion. We mentioned too that context is what are the circumstances that um, led to the creation of the, of the piece of discourse. And usually that sometimes the context is stated in the passage. And then we looked at the various types of um, rhetorical strategies, um, cause and effect classification, comparison um, slash contrast definition. And we looked at various examples of definition. We looked at various examples of um, illustration slash examples. We looked at um, process explanation or process analysis or chronology. And we mentioned that even a eulogy is an example of that or a manual or even a menu. Then we looked at other types of rhetorical um, strategies in terms of patterns of arrangement. And we did mention chronology, which is what I mentioned earlier. Um, and also to the different types of facts that exist and how that in and of itself affects the writer's credibility. And then I mentioned too that your second paragraph, body paragraph will probably or more likely speak to style. And then we looked at the various examples of style and all of that. And these are just some examples. And I did say that many sources may not be expository, so might be um, argumentative. So in order for you to identify the type of discourse mode, you must determine the writer's overall purpose first before you go any further. And this was a summation of that. And in terms of evaluating the text, these are some of the questions you answer. What is the dominant discourse mode? But I always say before you determine that you have to determine the writer's purpose. It is the writer's purpose that will determine the type of discourse mode as well as the type of um, language or organizing principles or strategies that are used and also the type of evidence that is used. Um, and these are, in other words, these are some of the questions that you answer when you're doing critical analysis. Uh, science of bias that speaks to credibility. One of the things that I want to mention, and let me put it here for you. I, all right, so it's mid semester. Mid semester. Organizing, organizing. I'm going to say my. Discourse Analysis Essay. All right, so you have an introduction. You have two to three body paragraphs. Where then it's really going to be two in your case, two body paragraphs, but some persons might have paragraphs and a conclusion, right? Conclusion. In the introduction, you're going to put main idea, purpose, discourse. So let me say dominant discourse mode, dominant discourse mode, and thesis. All right, what's wrong with the word purpose here? Yeah? Right, I'm wondering, that's how you spell purpose. And then one topic sentence on organizing principles, let's say three to four organizing principles. No, that's not where I put it. No. Second topic sentence on style or 
and or language techniques. Put in bracket figures of speech. Then you do your conclusion. You know what her name taught me something the other day about the slides thing that I can increase the size. Yes. I don't remember. Don't remember what to do it. And for the conclusion, restate thesis and summarize me points in body para so I have the correct spelling of summarize but because it's not American they're flagging it all right so it's 32 let's see 28 yes 28 actually it was let's bring this down no that's not what I want to bring down this is what I want to bring down all right, so the mid-semester organizing your, organizing my discourse analysis essay. So you have an introduction, which is right here. You have two to three body paragraphs and you have a conclusion. All right, so we soon get into exactly how you're going to organize it, but I just wanted to remind you about the organizing principles. Before we go any further, And there's a textbook called, anybody knows a textbook writing in English? Hmm. There's a textbook called writing in English. Anybody knows that? Can you just quickly Google it and see what comes up? Writing in English. Sir, mm -hmm. this, this information that you just gave a while ago, um, how do I get these? Do you have them in a slide form or where they sent to persons? I email it to the class. Don't you check your, your, your canvas email? Sir, That's I the... signed the class. I go on canvas and I always check to see what is there. When did you start the class? About what? About a month now. That's not starting the class late. You started the class when you were supposed to start the class. And it's if you're in my class, you get my emails. If you're in the class for a month, then you need, well, you need to consult your head, head of school because I'm not the reason why you're not getting the emails. That's coming from your head of school. Because once I when I send emails, I just say, I just say, um, I just send it to all students. So I would not have any control who gets or who doesn't. Because once they give me the class list, then I just send it. All right. So you need to cons if you're not getting the lecture, if you're not getting the information coming through Canvas, you need to consult your um, head of school. Other students, are, have you received my emails that I've sent? I don't send a lot of emails, but I've sent like one or two or three, and I'm sure you guys have received them, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Because I know. I just and it's for my both is for both my classes, so everybody would get it. All right. So before we get to the actual essay writing, what we want to do is just to again just refresh our recollection as it relates to the rhetorical strategies and all of that. All right. And then we are going to look at some examples. I think I gave you something to do, but I think we might just do them together. All right. I have oh, I actually have a video that I yeah, so probably I need to upload the videos in the WhatsApp group as well. You see, I post something in the WhatsApp group? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. So sometimes I discover these things. Where did I save it? It's on, no, it should be in ECC, no? Come on, lectures. Week three analysis. That's lectures. These are videos. All right, so there are two videos. I think we should be able to help you as well. I don't think I can upload them to my YouTube channel. They're going to flag it for plagiarism. 
for copyright, not plagiarizing for copyright. If I upload them, can't upload them to, to turn it in. All right, so let's look at the let's look at the an example of let me still a rhetorical analysis, but I'm just giving you some additional information, trying to ensure that you understand it the best way possible before um before um where is it right here okay this short lesson video is meant to review how you can you expand and improve and add depth to yes, your explanation of rhetorical strategies on the AP rhetorical analysis essay. Um, what tends to make a good essay a great essay for students is how well you can explain and give insight into how those strategies work and affect the audience. Some students tend to try to explain a strategy by simply summarizing what the author said. That's the biggest mistake that a lot of students make in these explanations. What you're looking to do when you explain each one of these strategies is number one to show off your language skills because it's a language test. They want to see what type of writer you are. But if you'll remember to try to answer a series of questions with your explanation. If you can remember to try to answer these questions, if you do that effectively, you will have a really good explanation to that strategy and really show off your language skills. The first question would be, how does this strategy usually work? You have to, in that explanation, show that you know how the strategy you identified works. You know what the strategy is. Um, don't assume that they'll just know what strategy you're talking about. You need to show that you know what the strategy is and how it usually works. Next you would want to explain how the strategy is working in the specific example you gave. right? As you've reviewed on this, you identify a strategy being used, you give an example of that strategy being used from the text, and then you need to kind of interpret and explain how that specific example, how the strategy is being used within it. This is a vital question to try to answer if you can. Why did the author or speaker use this strategy on this particular audience? This is really where you get that depth. This is where people who score high on this essay tend to really shine. Okay, So you want to avoid in answering that question saying things like this. Well, the author uses it on this audience to get his point across or to tell them what he wants them to know or to make his point. Um, that's kind of a cop out. You want to be more specific than that. All these things are very general and if I was grading that I, I, I would believe that you didn't know what their point was because you're not being specific or you didn't know what he wanted he or she wanted the audience to know or you didn't know what point that the author was trying to make and so you just say that. It's a cop out and um, it's not really quality explanation of the strategy. And then this one may be the most important piece. Really what makes the best rhetorical analysis essays shine and stand apart is when students get into interpreting and kind of speaking confidently about how this strategy made the specific audience feel and how this strategy made the specific audience react or respond. We want you as a interpreter and, and uh, as someone analyzing this, this piece of, of writing, we want you to get in the audience's head. We want you to ask yourself what's going on in the audience's head when they read and encounter this strategy. Remember, the author or speaker is using this strategy to essentially manipulate the audience on purpose, and you need to talk about what's happening in the audience's head. How are you manipulating? How's the audience manipulating them? So in order to do that, you have to actually know your audience, right? Um, so it's going to be really important that if you don't know who the intended audience of the piece was, then you can't really accurately analyze how the strategies work on them. Now the good news is, when you look at that AP prompt, right at the top, before the actual passage itself, they'll always give you some background information. In this background information, they'll tell you who 
wrote or gave the speech that's being uh, given, what the occasion was, right? Delivered a speech fall. Um, following speech before the convention of the National American Women's Suffrage Association. So it also tells you who the audience is, right? Um, this information is vital for you to be able to speak intelligently about how that strategy was working on the audience. Remember the rhetorical triangle, which has nothing to do with the Illuminati, right? For you conspiracy theorists out there. The best way to understand this is to see it in action. I pulled a couple of student examples that I think do a great job of explaining, okay? So take a minute and pause the screen and carefully read how this student analyzed uh, the strategy that they gave it and how they talked about the interaction between the speaker and the audience and what's going on in the audience's head. Pause it for a minute. Now, they take some big leaps here. They say some things to kind of... Uh, push the envelope a little bit, you know, um, but it works. They talk about what's going on in the audience's head and the positive association they get. Very good example here of what you're looking to do. Let's look at another example. Take a minute, pause the screen, and read through this. Continue reading down here. Notice how much this student talks about the speaker and the speaker's intention in using this strategy and notice how much they talk about the audience and what the audience is believing and thinking when the speaker uses this strategy. This is what a quality explanation looks like in the rhetorical analysis essay. That is what you're going for if you want to score high. So if you're watching this video as a part of the review for the AP exam, um, one of the things I'm asking you to do is to go back over your work. Go look at when you've tried to attempted to explain these rhetorical strategies and see how you can make those explanations look more like the explanations I just showed you. All right, um, I'm hoping that it's a bit clearer. Any, anybody got anything out of this particular um, recording? Got any new insights? Hello? People, you need to respond. Sorry, the um, recording was telling us that we should not be big in our explanation. Mm -hmm. Yes, anybody else? I'm not sure why people are not talking. I hope when you get your day, the work, you, you're you okay. Because if you not talk, I don't know if you understand. The other one is a bit longer, but it also reinforces most of what I said before. Let me share screen. Hi, kids. You're sitting down right in your rhetorical analysis essay, and here's a review if you need it. The rhetorical analysis essay is about the strategies that the author is using in the text. And it's not enough to find them, you have to explain how they work. So be careful that you're not writing a summary of the passage or your response as an argument to the passage. What you're doing is you're finding the main rhetorical devices that the author's relying on to create his or her argument and you're explaining how they work. So the first thing you need to do is you need to read the passage. Make sure that you annotate it so that you can find your way back as you're writing your essay, that you identify what you believe are the main devices. That's your argument in this paper. You are saying these are the main devices that this author is using to create this argument. You develop your argument about the author's devices. Make sure you discuss the purpose 
why he or she is writing this, what he or she wants to accomplish as a result of writing this, or in the case of a speech, speaking it, what audience they intend to reach. And once you've identified that and make sure that you write it down on the passage so it's there for you to find, then you start writing. Okay, once you start writing, you need to write a solid introduction. So make sure that you do the following. You do need to summarize the essay briefly, one or two sentences, okay? Just briefly. Um, you need to outline the speaker's thesis and main argument so that you're setting up what the writer's trying to do and then your body paragraphs are going to show how he or she does it, okay? So you want to make a reference to what the author is saying, or writing, really, and how it is said, and that's where you get into tone and the classical appeals to ethos, pathos, and logos, and perhaps some of the other grammatical and rhetorical strategies. That will be in the body paragraphs of your essay. Do not write a sentence such as, um, the author uses tone and several rhetorical devices to make the argument that blah, blah, blah. You need to be specific, okay? In a pinch, but only in a pinch, you can start with a rhetorical praise It will work in this case and pretty much every case. However, for our purposes, especially in the first few rhetorical analysis essays that you're writing, you're writing them in class with a lot of support. So I want to see a real solid introduction. In a timed writing situation, you can fall back on the rhetorical praise and it will work for you. So there you go. So now we're on to your body paragraphs. There's no hard and fast rule about how many that you need. There's, you don't have to have three. You don't have to have a five paragraph essay. Um, each of your body paragraphs needs to be its own entity that serves your argument about how the author is creating meaning. And if you do that in two long, solid, well-developed paragraphs, three, four, it's okay as long as you have a full and developed rhetorical analysis essay. So in each of your body paragraphs, you want to focus on a main rhetorical strategy that is used by the author and you want to explain the effect. So each body paragraph should focus on one significant one that you develop fully and explain fully, or perhaps there's a couple that you put together because they're related and they're being used in the same way, um, but that's what each paragraph should contain, okay? You want to comment on how the writer organized the text. You want to talk about or write about. Don't write talk. You want to write about how the argument developed. For instance, in Martin Luther King's letter from a Birmingham jail, he starts out with an address that explains why he's taking time to respond to these clergymen before he launches into his point-by-point -point argument. And his argument builds one idea on the other. If you are writing a rhetorical analysis of that piece of work, you would want to make sure that you note where you are in your analysis where you are in his essay and point out how that part of his argument developed from the previous paragraphs and sets the stage for the future paragraphs. So you want to make sure that you're discussing that as well. A little bit more about your body paragraphs. When you are writing your body paragraphs, there are two things that are probably important in every piece of work. It is diction and tone. However, it is not enough to use those words. If you use the word diction and you use the word tone, you need to use an adjective along with it to describe 
the author's diction and to describe the author's tone. For instance, back to Martin Luther King and his letter from a Birmingham jail, his tone is passionate. He is making an ardent plea to his fellow clergymen. And his diction is elevated. He is making allusions to the Bible in service of his argument. It is formal. It is not at all conversational. You also want to look at shifts in tone and diction when it changes. In his letter to a Birmingham jail, there is a shift at one point in his letter when he goes from addressing his fellow clergymen about the points in their argument to stating his disappointment in the church and the church's leaders and their failure to take up his cause. And there is a shift there and his tone becomes almost morose. He is disappointed. His diction becomes a little less elevated because he is making a different kind of plea. Now, if you're reading something and there are several instances of figurative language, you'd want to address that. Sometimes some of the things that we read will not have that. Um, they will, the author, instead of using figurative language such as similes and metaphors, well, and imagery and all that sort of stuff, they will instead rely on some other type of rhetorical device. If it's there, though, you probably want to mention it. One thing you may want to look at also is the length of paragraphs and the length and style of sentences. When we covered a uh, letter from a Birmingham jail in class, um, you probably noticed that the length of paragraphs and the style of sentences is quite different from the work of Steinbeck that we covered in class. The tone's different, the diction is different, the paragraphs are arranged differently because they're serving a different purpose. You also want to look at the organization of paragraphs so that you're looking at how the author's argument is developing one paragraph to the other. In your conclusion, you want to comment on the effect of the essay as a whole. The author has a purpose. They're trying to make something happen as a result of that essay and you want to discuss that overall effect that you may have even touched on in your introduction and pieces of it in your body paragraphs and now you want to look at the whole. When I talk about using the conclusion to comment on the effectiveness, that is not your call to applaud the writer. Instead, you're looking at how in history, if you have that information, how that piece of work affected the audience that the author intended it to affect. Okay? You want to drive home your argument of what's found in the text. Do you say these three or four things are what drive this essay and create the meaning of it? And you want to come back and address that. Okay? Avoid the sound of applause. Okay, stick with responding to the argument and its art and its organization instead of, you know, perhaps speaking about what a great writer that person is or how you were personally moved or something like that. Leave that out of your essay completely and particularly your conclusion. And now finally, here are some tips for the whole essay. You want to use present tense because writing is always alive in the moment. So when you're writing an essay, if you're referring to Martin Luther King's letter from a Birmingham jail, you would use is instead of was, write instead of wrote, pleads instead of pled, etc. Remember your tag, title, author, genre. If you're unclear of the genre, you can always use the word passage or excerpt. You need to refer to yourself if you must refer to yourself, which you probably want to avoid doing, if at all possible. But if you are going to refer to yourself, refer to yourself as the reader or the audience. Never use the word you. Avoid that completely. Replace it with something more specific. Okay? In your body paragraphs, you need to support your claims. With direct quotations, you need to take direct quotations from the text. You also probably want to rely somewhat on paraphrased information. 
so that if you say the author is using this device for this purpose, you need to quote where it is. The sentence, the phrase, if you're talking about anaphora, it would be several phrases or several sentences and you need to put that quote in there. Make sure that the bulk of your paragraph though is not quoting the passage. The bulk of the paragraph is your essay. But you do need to have quotes from the passage and paraphrased information to support what you're saying is going on in that essay. Okay? Or speech or poem or whatever. You want to at all costs avoid the rhetorical analysis scavenger hunt list essay. Do not simply list the devices that you find and quote them, perhaps, and call it good. You need to truly respond to the text and discuss how those devices are working in that essay. Good luck to you. Write a great essay. All right, so that was a, a bit of a mouthful, but it really reinforced, again, some of the points that I had made mention of. Um, anything stood out to you? Any comments, anything stood out? Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. It was um, the conclusion, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, the reference of you, sir. I am always doing that, sir. Saying you are, that I am the reader. Of well, the I art. did say. Well, I did say that to you that in this context you cannot use what are called personal pronouns. So I, you, us, or you cannot use it in academic writing because it changes the register. Remember, we spoke. We spoke about style. The style has to be academic in nature, and when you're doing academic writing, you don't use personal pronouns. You almost always write from the third person perspective, unless instructed to do otherwise. All right, so I'm happy that you mentioned that. Thanks, sir. Yes, welcome. Anybody else? I see somebody says that she's nervous. Tanashi, nervous about what? What what is causing um, jitters for you? Um, sir, it's like most of the time the lessons are being taught. So I'm on my way home. Sometimes mm -hmm. I can hardly hear, like even now. So I'm basically missing out a lot. But are you watching the recordings though? Because I try to upload that's them. What, that's what I, I am trying to do to get the whole um, understanding though. Okay, all right. And what so... I do, I, I screenshot things and then I try and read up after. Okay, all right. Somebody said, sir. Uh -huh. Yes. Sir, I don't, I'm not seeing a recording for last week, um, Wednesday. Um, can somebody confirm? I'm almost sure if I uploaded all the recordings. Uh, don't see it because I'm, I was waiting to see it. Um, because normally when you post it, because I subscribe, I see it come up to my phone. I'm still waiting to see because I wanted to watch it. So I'm a bit lost with everything. Were you not at the class? No, I was not at class last week, Wednesday. All right, let me just go. But last week, Wednesday was what date again? Remind me. Let me go back and see because I'm almost sure I uploaded. I think it's the 17th. Yeah. November 17. All right. Um... So I bought the, the video. Yes, go ahead. So uh, my one of my key takeaway points was when she said, don't go scavenger hunting and saying, you know, just stating you know, what the use of the rhetorical, the rhetorical device is. You must um, talk about how it connected with the paragraph and what it did also. Which is what I say, you have to connect it to the writer's purpose. You can't just say the writer uses contrast in the line or uses contrast to compare apples and bananas and leave it like that. You're not going to get any mark for that. You have to say the writer uses contrast to point out X and Y, X and Y. And we're going to do some practice of that. I am almost sure I uploaded this recording, you know, let me just see, because uh, once I see it clicked on, um, this is Monday. So this is PS. I am almost sure this recording is there. Without a doubt that I uploaded it. Let me just go back. Um, 
Uh, name of the recording um, week four um, lecture ones, eh? five days yeah. ago. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's there. I didn't oh, miss okay, it. Not, yeah. I didn't miss it because I, I, I it would have been, I think it would have been last week. Let me just look in my folder and I tell you exactly as you are saying to me. Um, it would have been from the 25th, it would have been week, what, three or four? Week four, lecture on. Oh, so, oh, lie, but I don't see week. That's the one I saw, so week four. Oh, so, she, so she's not seeing week four, lecture two. Right, yeah. right, that's what we're not seeing, sir. I wonder if I'll mislabel it. Lord, I pray to God I never mislabel it. All right, see it. Uh, I, I see one where it says. It, the class was on the, so the 16th, 17th. which the is 17th. on the 17th. All right, yes, so. Sir. So this, oh, I mislabeled it, you know. I think that's what happened. All right, so if that is that, the, the class was a 17, so it would have been. Because the one, all right, sir, my understanding is the one that says PSY, that's the one that we supposed to watch. Yeah, you're correct. Um, okay. This is oral com. So this would have been. Oh, I just found it. All right, so let me upload it right now. My, my apologies, I actually didn't click on it. I uploaded oral communication, but not it. I'm not sure how I missed it. So I'm gonna upload it right now before we go any further. And then we look at All right, so let me, before I forget, so it would be, this would be week four, lecture two, right? Yeah, I think that's what it would be. Right? Yes, I think that's what it should be, yeah. Yeah. All right. PSY. How are your other classes? Are they fun and exciting? And how are your other classes? People, it's not a rhetorical question. Every time I ask a question to this class, everybody's silent. Well, for me, sir, the classes are they're okay so far. Yeah, we get to interact with each other. Mm -hmm. We're going to groups. Um, we get to know each other names, we get to work together. So it's really good thus far. Okay, anybody else? For me, sir, mm -hmm. um, I think my best classes are um, intro to psychology and uh, ethics of health in the profession, sir. Mm -hmm. I think those are the mo most exciting class and um, because we are maybe a bit small, so we get the chance to interact um, more, sir, with each other, sir, during mm -hmm. our class time, sir. Okay. All right, because some lecturers, some, some persons were saying students seem not to enjoy online classes. And I was like, I don't have an issue with my class. My students come to the class and um, everything, everything is okay. So I was a little bit surprised when I heard that some of the lecturers were saying that students are not coming to class and all kind of stuff. And I was like, really? My students are always did it. I guess some, some lecturers, um, because they're not used to the online environment, they have to come up with creative ways to engage students. So like in my, in my oral com class, they're going to create a TikTok video for me one of their publics for their speech of special occasion. And mind you, I can't create a TikTok video. I've never created one, but they don't know that. So I'm gonna get somebody who knows how to create one to come in and show them how to create one. 
and they have to create one for the class. And I'm sure they'll enjoy that. And you can actually earn from TikTok. All right, so the video has, is, it is uploading, you know, it takes a little while to become um, accessible to everybody. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. All right, you're welcome. And thanks for pointing it out because I honestly thought I had uploaded it. All right, so let's look at some examples now. That's the part where I want to go. Just before you go, sir. Mm -hmm. Question, our writing isn't dead. So even though you have, like, for example, Dr. Martin Luther King would have, you know, written several, you know, speech and all that. When you're quoting our, you know, referencing from that, you have to write it in the present tense. Uh, Martin Luther King's um, work? No, it no, would no. Not. Anyone, in, anyone in particular? Just because they say you're right in the present tense, they don't write that now. Where I have been. No, so what forth. they're saying for discourse analysis papers, like literature papers, you always write in the present tense. It's just the rule of the genre of writing. So even for this course, you write in the present tense. You actually write in the present tense. Okay. Fine. It's just a rule of literature. You write in the present tense. So, um, you know, just a general rule. All right, so let's look at some examples. I think the one that we were doing in class, what, what, which one did I give you as quote unquote homework? Which passage was it again? Remind me. Every question I ask persons are silent. I don't know why. It's not a rhetorical question, people. Which one did I give you as homework? Sorry, it wasn't a passage that you gave for homework. I didn't give any homework? Yeah, give homework, but it was related to what we were writing. Uh, how what um, our, our intended audience, you know, what you know we plan to get across. I'm gonna bring it up now and look at it, but it wasn't that passage. Oh, hold on. Okay, so you have the that homework. So let's do the homework. homework. All right, hold on, hold on. No. Let me bring me back to the focus. Sir, Thank you for you reminding me. The homework for Wednesday. No, yes, a Wednesday, sir. Wednesday, sir. sir the homework for oh, it's a Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, yes, sir. Okay, all right, everybody. Mind on a plan and say Wednesday, no, you know. No, sir. No, sir. No, I'm gonna ask you about the writing strategy. Okay. Yeah, all right. Remember, the classes are recorded, you know, sir. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right all right so let's look at a different one because i have several i was actually looking trying to find an example i'd given when i was teaching at ucc i'd given some students which email did i use no i didn't use this one it would have been the ucc email i think i had some good ones some some students struggled uh was it here sentence online no Make up module. Mm, EPA would have given those students that to do rhetorical analysis. Here it is. Revision. Let's see two. All right. Let's see if if any of them actually makes sense. But you never write the thesis. Oh, this is sentence outline. Isn't that's not what I clicked on? I wanted rhetorical analysis. <laughs> Let's see the first one. Let's see the second one. Right, this is supposed to be rhetorical analysis. Mm -hmm. This is a good one. All right, so I'm going to give you a very controversial passage. That's what I'm going to do. So remember now in the introduction, so I'm going to teach you how to do it this way introduction you have main idea purpose discourse it's a dominant discourse mode dominant discourse mode 
mode and thesis. All right, so let me give you a very controversial passage. Um, this was one big excitement at the time when it came out. So let's say, do I give you this one first? Yep, it's very controversial. All right. Anybody knows Professor Carolyn Cooper? Yeah, Anybody knows Professor Cooper? No? Yes, sir, about who does it? Well, some people don't pay attention. All right, so the title of this passage is Casey Old Boys Desire Male Sex, making no assumptions about the content based on the passage. And I've shared the link in the chat, and I'm going to also share it in the WhatsApp group. All right, and as I said before, she's a bit controversial. Have you clicked on it? So I'm going to read in the interest of time. I have great respect for, and if you hear any device, any strategy or anything, you can just jot it down, right? So I have great respect for the Casey old boys who have proudly come out and made their sexual preference absolutely clear. The female sex is not for them. In 2012 and 2013, the Casey Old Boys Association tried to make it with women at their annual dinner. They concluded that the experiment had failed. This year, under the leadership of Dr. Patrick Dallas, the old boys decided to stick it to themselves. It is quite understandable. For five or even seven years, at a crucial stage of their sexual development, these Casey old boys spent five days every week for most of the year with their beloved classmates. They fought and made up. They played games on and off the field, and they embraced each other in victory and defeat. These old boys have become big men. In theory, they have big jobs, big houses, big cars, and big debts to prove it. But many of these big men are still just little boys dressed up in adult clothing. They long for the good old days on North Street when being a KC boy promised to make life so easy. It's entitled you to an eternity, an eternity of privilege. It must be quite difficult for these old boys to adjust and learn to enjoy the company of women. They're natural inferiors. It's not a skill at which they've had much practice. Their mothers and sisters don't count. Their family quite inappropriate for certain forms of exploration. And female teachers don't make good role models. They lack the right equipment. Some of these old boys may eventually get married to women, but it now seems as if they don't really enjoy associating with, these female, with the female sex. It's just not to their taste. They certainly don't want to wine and dine with women. They may occasionally do so on the down low, but definitely not in public. I don't understand why so many women are so angry at the KC old boys for publicly admitting that they want to play with themselves at their annual dinner. That's their choice. They have a right to their sexual preference. Delusional women believe they can channel the sexual desires of men. That's straight, that's just straight self-deception. No woman, no matter how hot she thinks she is, can force a man to want her if he's all wired up for men. The unwilling man may occasionally go through the motions of pleasing women for a peaceful life, but if his heart is not in it, he's likely to suffer from penal failure. And though it's quite possible to fake orgasm, it's impossible to fake erection. If the man is not psychologically prepared to play ball, not even Viagra can help him, and only God can save him from the vanity of a determined woman who thinks her charms ought to be enough to seduce him. I prefer a man to come clean with me, it saves a lot of time and money. Instead of getting all hot and bothered at the pleasurable prospect of making it with this gorgeous woman, I can just relax. Not Nagwan, the man is not for me. We can have great conversations and even go out together, but we don't know. There will be no going in or going, goings on. And ignorance of the truth is definitely not bliss. Just because you're a woman who has been invited to the KC Old Boys Dinner by one Mr. Fortis, you accept on the assumption that your old boy actually enjoys your company. On the night of the affair, you're dressed to post back foot and you know you're looking good. But after a while, you notice that Fortis not paying you no mind, paying you bad mind. Female intuition kicks in and it comes to you in a cold flash. Much to your vexation, you realize that you're actually an unwelcome intrusion. Your old boy's body may be next to you, but his eyes are roving the room, looking for the real objects of desire, his faithful companions from way back when. The origin of that word companion is Latin. Com means with and 
penis means bread. So literally accompanying is someone you eat bread with, and that includes patty and box juice, your, heart, your article brethren. No woman can come between a man and his bona fide high school sweethearts, plural. No matter how hard she tries, the brave may fall but never yield. All the same, several old boys, several old boys don't approve of that backward move to exclude women from the annual dinner. These are the real big men who have definitely grown up. They have no intention of leaving their female companions at home while they go off to live in the past with their high school sweethearts. After the old boys' dinner, they'll want to share bread and bread and bed with their women. With their woman, it should I should, it should be women. Kingston College is the brother school of St. Hughes. On November 22, we'll be having our 115th anniversary banquet. We are including men. It's such a pity some KC old boys don't seem to understand that it, it's that it's in their best interest to associate with women, the superior sex. Good sense might might just rub off on them. It takes a new kind of old boy to get it. All right, um, I want you to take a minute or two to read up, to read this particular, um, go through the passage and then try to identify um, main idea and purpose. So I want you to identify the writer's main idea, writer's purpose. Let me put it in the breakout room because I think the breakout room will give you enough time to kind of, um, uh, where's my breakout room every time I have to, oh yes, here it is. All right, so as I said, this is just random, okay? Random. So main idea, purpose, and if you can identify three organizational strategies, I'm gonna give you until 6.30. Yes, so you have more, you have about 17 minutes. All right, this is just random activity. All right, so go in the breakout room for me. Read the Sir, passage. What is, what is What's the main idea, purpose, and what? It's in the chat. And the three organizational strategies. Okay. Sir, Sir Clark. Yes. Sir, why you put me alone in a, in in a breakout room? 
Um, Yashika Benis is supposed to be in the breakout room with you. I'm um, alone in another room, sir. That's why I'm exit. Yeah, but why would you exit though if you get the work to do? Because you I've home. been in the room for like five minutes and there's Robert to enter and leave. Yeah, but I'm saying, but you can do the work on your own. If their persons are there and they don't want to work, you sit and do the work on your own. You don't have to depend on other persons. You sit and because the mid semester is not going to be group. Okay. So go back into the breakout room for me, guys. All right, sir.
Sir, Sir Robin. Yes, sir. Sir, can you, sir, can you add what add Roberto in group five, please? Group five. Yes, please. I was changing over my device. I was on it with two devices at once, so I ended up in two groups. All right, I think I put you back in group five. Okay, sir. All right. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. Welcome.
Sir Robin, sir? Yes? Sir, why you take me out? I, clo I closed the breakout room. Okay. All right, so let's hear it. Let's hear some of what is coming out of room one. Carla, Nikita, Rakisha, Shanet, talk to me. What, what are some of the things um, that you guys discussed as a group? Hello, room one, Carla, Nikita, Rakisha, Shanet, are you guys hearing me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, sir, mm -hmm. go, go ahead with the question that you just asked, please. Talk to me about what you discussed in your group in terms of the, the, the passage that you were given. Okay, sir. Um, we talked about, we thought the main idea, um, what we got as the reader, the bond between old boy, the KC Old Boys Association, um we thought the passage suggested well the readers thought the passage suggested that um casey old boys were um gay was trying to bring out their sexual orientation um so it's very controversial and suggestive of this idea so that's where we were i mean it took us out of very short room all right room two Dave, Davia, Eunice, Natoy, talk to us. Room two. Davia, Natoya. Sir, we discuss the main idea, sir. We and our main idea is um all Kingston. No, 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 no. Remember, what did I say about how do you express the main idea? The main idea is that. Remember, I told you that's how you write it. If you write it otherwise, I will not be giving you the mark. Go ahead. The main idea is that the KCO boys prefer men. All right. Um, anything else from room two? Um, room three, Alia, Leona, Tanishi. Well, yes, sir. Um, we believe that the writer's main idea was that the KC old boys preferred to um, stick with the, the gender that they already were going to school with. Um, the organizational strategies that the writer used, we saw um, contrast where they compared um, the KC old boys. To they the saw contrast where they compared, but contrast and compare don't mean the same thing. Comparison. So the writer between, showed similarities between? Between the KC old boys and the, um, the St. Hughes ladies. Was it a similarity? Family. Was it a comparison or was it contrast? Contrast. Right. So use the right term for me, please. Anything else? Sir, we thought that the writer's um, purpose was to highlight the fact that um, the KC boys felt as if including females was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's what we had. All right, room four, Alicia, Janelle, and Natoya. Um, sir, the main purpose of the article is to discredit 
the gathering of the esteemed gentlemen of the KC Old Boys Association by taking unnecessary jabs at their sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, the, the purpose of the article uh, is, is for the audience to believe that the association is a group of homosexuals who are misogynistic. Okay. Anything else? And there was a point where it also mentioned that <clears throat> the females thought it that they should be with them instead of with their own gender. And that fits where? Is that a strategy? Is that a technique? Is that a purpose audience what we you mentioned something where does that fit within the broader discussion of discourse analysis it would be one of the points in the thesis okay um room five georgia roberto yashika all right sir so the main idea the main idea um, from the article was that the reader is that is, the that, present tense. Mm -hmm. is that the reader sorry, the main idea from the article that the, the reader um, grasped is that the KC Old Boys Association preferred the same sex. Okay. And majority of the old boys would rather to have their setting in a manner as back in their days, at their high school days when they were only male present for school. Okay. Uh, the purpose of the the purpose of the article is to show the, the respect show respect to the fact that the KC old boys openly make known their preference for the same sex. The dominant discourse mode um would be the the is sorry is that the author is showing appreciation no, no, no. this course either the discourse mode can only be either exposition persuasion um narration or argumentation slash persuasion oh. that's the only thing oh. you can write uh, argumentation thing. slash persuasion sir. okay yes. all right and what is the purpose of of, of persuasion again does to it convince to, to convince all right, it's not only to convince. Remember, I gave you different things for, for persuasion, but if you say to convince. Um, room six, Chantal, Jason, Shanice. Uh, all right, sir, so the main idea from the article that we discussed in our group was that. Um, is that? Is that to, to show can be to show to show so, it to once you have to it that's purpose that's not main okay. idea um, okay so we discussed um the main idea of the article is that um the kto boys um had sex to a desire for male um had a sexual desire for male sex that's what you got, that, that sexual desire? Okay, all right, if that's what you got. Yes, sir, that's what we got. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? And the purpose of the passage is to give insight to female readers about the sexual desires of the PC old boys. My God, clearly we didn't read the same passage. All right, before you guys leave the, 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 this session believing uh, those kinds of things, so let me just go through some examples because... If you thought that the writer was insinuating that the guys were homosexual, that was far from what she was doing. All right. So let's look at some, some sample analysis. Because the writer was not implying any such thing about them being homosexual. There's something called satire. And if you don't know satire, then you're going to have a challenge. All right. This first one is not the best one. So let's look at number. All right. So this is from, was hers good? No. This was not a good one. All right, listen to what Arnold, Orlando Hill said some years ago. In the persuasive piece, which is correct, in the persuasive piece, Casey Old Boys, Desire Male Sex, the main idea is that the writer is trying to show, which, so this main idea is wrong because he said he's trying to, for me, say two in main idea is wrong. 
the old boys association it, that it is not in their best interest to revert to the tradition of having only boys at their annual dinner. So if you did not realize that what the writer was really doing in terms of the purpose was to criticize the old boys association for excluding women from their annual dinner, then of course, this is why you're talking about homosexuality because that's not what the focus was of the writer. All right, she was not implying that they were homosexuals. The writer's, the writer's purpose, listen to the purpose now, the writer's purpose is to dissuade the KC Old Boys Association from um, going back to the tradition of, ex of only boys being present. While the audience is a KC Old Boys Association, the writer expressed that the old boys of KC prefer old boys from KC at their annual day. And it's kind of you know, a little bit redundant, but this is a student writing. They had invited women on two occasions which had failed, and as such, they had have decided no longer to have women present, as stated by the writer in paragraph two. So this is a semblance of an introduction. The thesis is not there, but this student indicates that he understands one, the type of discourse mode, two, to some extent, the writer's purpose. Three, the writer, no, two, to some extent, the writer's main idea. Three, the writer's purpose is spot on. And four, that, um, well, and for the audience. So the audience, in other words, the person or group that the audience, the, the, the author or the writer is speaking to is the KC Boys Association or the, the KC Old Boys Association. All right, let's look at another. And I'm showing you just introductions for now. Um, is Kimina. Yes, listen to this one. In the persuasive piece titled KC Old Boys Association, the writer mocks, this is very good, the writer mocks the decision of the old boys to exclude women at their annual ba banquet and also uses the article to demonstrate, well, this part I don't like. The writer's main idea, the writer's main purpose is, is to draw your attention to different aspects. That part is a little bit off. But I like the word use of the word mock. Um, if you don't know the word satire, then you would have assumed wrong. I put the word in the chat. Let's look at another one. Um, this is Neon Smith. Look at this very um, good piece. Although the discourse mode for him is wrong. The discourse mode for this one is wrong. But I think, but the, the, some parts of it is wrong, but there are parts of it that demonstrate that the student to some extent understands. So in the expository piece, it's not an expository piece. The writer cheerfully brings across her main idea. This is not a very good way. But this part is good, are that the old, KC old boys are immature in their decision to exclude women from their annual dinner. This decision arose out of the failed attempts to include women in the social event. By poking fun, which is true, at the old boys association's decision, the writer seeks to bring into focus the reasons they choose to exclude women. Um, and then the writer says their spouses um, to achieve the purpose, the writer uses three organizational strategies. All right. So this person, even though the discourse mode is not correct, the right, the person understands many aspects of what is being stated by the writer. Let's look at another one. I think this is the most, the best one I think I have. In the persuasive piece titled KC Boys Desire Male Sex, the writer illustrates her displeasure with the decision taken by the KC Old Boys Association to revert to the practice of only allowing alumni to attend their annual dinner instead of extending an invite to their female companions. The writer's discontent is conveyed in the title KC Boy Desire Male Sex, where it is insinuated the KC uh, K Kingston College alumni prefer company of each other than that of the female sex. The writer achieves this by using three organizational strategies and the person talks about the, the organizational strategies. And we're going to talk about organizational strategy, but I want you to get a sense of the introduction. Um, Siku Burke, was this a good one? I don't have her name down. I think this was a, this was a, this one was not good because of the length, it was too long. The introduction just needs to be one, two, three to four sentences. May, main idea purpose and thesis and you're good or if you want to and in your per, in your main idea you can say in the expository piece or in the persuasive piece entitled casey boys um uh, old boy prefer male sex the writer's main idea is that so you'd have captured main idea and um and, and discourse mode so this is too long is it is it making sense now people coming a little getting some sir can i read yeah. a comment yes go ahead can I read a comment from what a person say under the article? 
I'm not sure why we're going there, but go ahead. Um, it is saying there are so many ignorant, well, she's saying satire is used, is the use of wit, humor, to point out the flaws are false on an individual group or society. And she was right on target. So many people up in arms about this. The late Louise Bennett cloverly used it extensively, but many people wouldn't recognize it, recognize the use in her poems and would only think the poems were funny. Jamaicans need to educate themselves and stop allowing pers personal feelings to flow their judgment. And she went down to say satire also works in tandem mm -hmm. with pun. These mm -hmm. are literary, literary devices, figures mm -hmm. of speech, pun is play on words, mm -hmm. usually having more than one interpretation. Male sex play on it. It draws attention to the old ex exclusivity. Exclusivity. It, right. Inclusive concept. Right. right, that's about it, sir. Yes, and I'm happy you mentioned that because the I remember when it came out in 2014, when I read it, I said, oh, Lord, I know they're going to kill Caroline Cooper now. But they would not understand, or some people choose not to understand, that this is satire. She was not saying that they're homosexual. All she was doing was just poking fun at the Casey Old Boys Association for excluding women from their dinner. That's all she was doing. And she wanted them to change. That's all that was happening. She was not saying that they were homosexuals. All right, the problem in our culture is that every single thing we like to label homosexual, we get so up in arms about that. You find that, the, especially the male body is very policed in our culture. So two men, or if two men stand and talk for an hour and a woman come and say, oh, not talk so long, the man them start, all right, go on your yard, boss. Right? They just get so uncomfortable because the male presence or the male body is so policed. So every little thing you label as homosexual. All right, so this is why people are very quick to say that you know it's a homosexual thing, but it was not. She was just poking fun at the Old Boys Association. And I kind of deliberately chose this one because it's important that as students that you widen your vocabulary in terms, your vocabulary in terms of critical analysis, that you don't necessarily um, do what is called skimming. Remember, we talked about types of reading, skimming, but you have to do critical reading. All right. So this one, uh, I, I don't remember if I read it. She says, in the persuasive piece titled Old Boys Male Sex, Desire Male Sex, the concerned writer criticized the KC Old Boys. So we're getting concerned. This is the tone. This is tone. Concern, the word concern here is tone. Criticize is purpose. Persuasive piece is discourse mode. So we're getting one, two, three things in one in the introduction alone. Boom. This is how you should actually write your introductions. You get some of the stuff out the way, and I'll put some of it in the in the uh, in the in the WhatsApp group. Um, all right. So let let me not read any more introduction. But this part about hypotheticals, when it says in the first instance, the writer uses three organizational strategies. For example. Hypothetical, I think this person was talking about hypothetical example in which the writer describes men spend their early days of development with each other, which includes a classroom at play. And this is correct. This is actually a, a hype. I don't know if anybody saw that there was a hypothetical example being used where it was made up. This is further emphasized. This further emphasizes the point of their comfort with own sex. The writer further inferred of the excitement to be in each other's company and they would go to the extra mile to outdo each other in appearance expressed in paragraph 10. So, so the writer has actually identified one organizational strategy in terms of hypothetical example. And there was one that was really good. Um, did I pass? This is Orlando Williams. Let me go back to Orlando Williams because I think even some of his analysis. All right, so let's look at some of what he says in the body. The writer's main idea, I think we spoke about the writer's main, all right, so let's just read it. The writer's main idea is that the Casey Old Boys Association decision to allow women to allow alumni to attend their is not in their best interest. The writer illustrates this point through her use of literary technique of reverse definition. I'm not sure if anybody saw the reverse definition. In paragraph 40, illustrate that though the alumni of the college has grown um, physically, they are still boys. And think about it. Do you see the oxymoron in the title, all boys? 
I'm not sure if you saw that oxymoron where two contrasting words are placed. Well, it's 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 really is it oxymoron, old boys? It's kind of oxymoronish, or or if you want to say, um, what's the other one? It's not oxymoron. What they call the other one again? So tell you the other one, because if you're a boy, you're not considered what old, right? So again, the old boys poking fun again at this in the sense that these are grown men acting as boys, as if they're still in high school. Do you see that? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. so the writer does use reverse definition to poke fun at these persons to say, boy, you know, you are grown men, but you're acting like boys. All right. And yes, Alicia says irony. Yes, if you put irony, it would also work there. Very good answer. The writer further hints that this could, as, could be as a result of the alumni limited interaction with the upper six sex during their formative years. As a result of the writer's purpose being shown to being to show her displeasure with the Casey Awards Association to not allow female companion, the writer uses three organizational strategies. In the first instance, through the use of subheading, the writer is able to divide the piece into distinct section, which allowed her to describe her point clearly. I don't like this point, though. It was a little bit, it's, it's what I call fluff. Um, in the second instance, the writer appeals to the pathos. Um, anybody knows pathos? Appeal to pathos is emotion, when you appeal to emotion. Through the use of organizations such as hypothetical examples, starting in paragraph seven and ending in paragraph 11. Through the use of the hypothetical example and repeat the pathos, the writer was able to effectively illustrate or point in label. I don't like this part. Uh, in the third instance, let's look at the third instance. Through the use of organizations of contrast, contrast here, the writer shows the difference between the alumni of St. Hugh's High School and, this, and, and Kingston College in the way they treated the companions of their respective alumni. St. Hugh's being an institution that also caters to one sex opt opted to include male companions of the alumni in their annual banquet, while Casey did not. Do we see how the writer now is, is used, is pointing out these various, um, identifying the strategy, but more importantly, talking about the effectiveness of the strategy. We saw that, right? So that's what I'm looking for in your work. That's really what I'm looking for in your work. All right, are there any questions? We can, we're going to look at them again. So um, we're going to look at it again in, on Wednesday. Any questions? Think you're getting a little, a better sense of it? Yes, sir. Clearly enough, sir. Yes, you know, I'm going to pick up that when, when, even after you finish reading it. But I'm saying, all right, let's just um, dig in a bit and, you know, work with the four to is at the value of what we just heard. But um, we get it clearly. We get it clearly. Nonetheless, sir, could you just um, recap what you wanted for the, the homework, please, if it is? Forward. Well, just do what I'll say for the homework. Just write an introduction. Just write, just like the examples I'm showing you here. Just write an introduction. Let's start there. I'm going to post the two examples in the chat because I did um, copy them. You guys are, yeah. Let me see if I just post it in the chat. So let's start there. Uh, I think I have one, two. So I have one, can I do three? Yes. So I think I have two. So remember now, these are written by students. So they will have some amount of quote unquote grammatical errors, but at the end of the day, language, the expression is marked on its own. But what is important is the fact that the students understand Especially the, especially the second one, where it says in the persuasive piece, the writer used concern, criticized, persuasive piece, that those are three different marks. Bam, 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 you get your marks there. So criticize, purpose, concern, tone, persuasive piece, discourse. And you get your marks and you move on. It was very, very easy for that writer. And, I, and at the time when I was teaching the students, I said to them, you have to make smart decisions about how to get your marks. All right, if you know you're getting marks for certain things, you find creative ways. So in your introduction, you can put discourse mode to um, purpose, audience, and so forth in your introduction. So let's start there. Write your introduction and, and let me look at it, okay? okay? So write our introduction on what piece, please? On what we are working on? Yes, on what you're working on. Okay. All right. All right, have a good night, everybody. I have another class, seven to nine. Same to you. Good night. Night, night.